Welcome back everyone to this week's episode of the McInnes Marketing Minute. We are coming at you live from, well, the rooftop of a new listing at 1189 Melville called The Melville. There we go. Which they should have made this the penthouse. I still strongly disagree with the developer and architect's design here. It's beautiful, but this should be a penthouse rooftop, just for the record. Continue. Okay, well, we'll show you some footage of that uh, later in the coming weeks, but we're here to talk, of course, update you on the market as per usual. Last week, we had our June 2020 numbers come out. Okay. And I think it's important after, I don't think it's just between us, but speaking to some other agents and some other clients as well as a little bit as to what's going on with like pricing and offering strategies. There's a few funky approaches, which are not necessarily wrong, but are challenging in the market. And to be honest, probably harming you quite bad if you're following them as well. So let's, let's break this up into two. So first of all, I'm gonna rock back and forth here because the sun is very bright that way. And so that's just my way of catching a breather. So let's start with sellers on some of the interesting techniques that we've been seeing. Yeah, so everyone's, sorry, it is bright. Everyone's um, familiar with how sellers typically react in a heating market, um, the uh, old under market and try and generate uh, multiple offers. Mm. So we've had a few people talk to us about this. The market's kind of picked up again after COVID and should we approach that the market with that strategy? So if we're worth a million, should we list at 950 to try and get a million and 50? And this is most definitely not, in my opinion, you may have a different opinion, you shouldn't, but you may. <laughs> most uh, definitely not the approach to take in this market depending i don't think it is in general any in any segment of this market personally i don't like detached housing detached housing on vancouver's east side <clears throat> i still wouldn't i would it's i i mean it's pretty hot we'll beg to differ on that one but that's the only debatable one essentially in order for that to really you need to capitalize on that home buyer demand needs to be really pushing high numbers and we're moving on the upwards yes However, we're not at those levels in our opinion. Prior to COVID, yes, a lot March, of people were March, doing that. That March, was a yes. very popular tactic and it was proven very <sighs> successful with a lot of people. But prior to COVID, our home buyer demand was up here. It was eating up everything new and more that was coming to market. And we're kind of more at towards a balance level, even home buyer demand slightly down on new inventory as well. Yeah, and when trying to achieve pricing, so actually get a realistic sale price, you can't have your mindset of that market because when the market's churning and running like that and people are under listing and you have multiple people coming in, the perspective of what the market value based on comparables is very quickly lost. And when you're not in that market, you very quickly have to run back to what are the comps? We need to justify what we're trying to do here. If the market pushes us up a little bit, great. If it comes down a little bit, depending on your motivation as a seller and you let it go for a little bit less than the comps, fair enough. But you have to have acute perspective, I believe, on the comps in a balanced market or slightly either side, which we're in now. And not to err on the side of pessimism, because we always try and stay optimistic. But the thing is, if that doesn't work, so then you then take it off of the market and then come on at a higher price, everyone can tell immediately what your game was from the get-go and that's only going to harm you in any potential future sales moving forward because they know that you didn't get that number in between that you were looking for. Yeah, obviously all these numbers are public and you can only go to market for the first time once. And if you ruin that by trying to take, we'll call right now a greedy approach, it's definitely not going to help you in the long run. And then on the other side of things, there's a little bit more on airing on the side of caution, but it's erring on the side of caution too much. So when people want to list their properties, um, let's say for 950, they're actually happy selling at 850 or maybe 875, but they're giving themselves that extra room for buffering. We're at a point right now where again, that home buyer demand isn't high enough yet that people are still going to come through your property and still offer way less than what it's actually valued at, which in this case is 950 versus they'll take 850. There is always the chance, but if you give yourself too much of a buffer of negotiation, a lot of the market is just gonna look at you as either overpriced or not as good as the other options that are available. And then they'll just bypass you and go to the other options as well. Yeah, all again, all these things, the comps that you're, that if, if you're a seller and the comps that me and my buyer are coming to you with are relative and recent and you are far above 
it's a very realistic circumstance that there's more than one of you, Mr. Two Bedroom with a thousand square feet on the market. Mm -hmm. If you look too unrealistic, we're just gonna go to the next one because we don't wanna waste time negotiating with you with your very obvious and realistic points of view from the start. Once again, it goes back to home buyer demand. If the home buyer demand is higher and it's eating up that inventory, there aren't as many other people out there to potentially look at and compete with yourself. So they will maybe still go to your property and that's when you can start looking at potential negotiations if there is an offer. And a final point to that, just because you list higher does not mean you're going to sell higher. Correct. So a lot of people, I think also that's one other one to touch on is a lot of people think, enough. yeah, if we list higher, it's fine. It's just going to take us long to sell. It's not the case. It doesn't mean you're just going to take six months to get your higher premium. It just means that you will sit there and sit there and sit there. There's many listings, which even now have been on the market for a year plus because people are just sat there waiting, you know, oh, this is going to happen with the economy and this and speculating and not getting their premium as well. And days on market definitely are of no benefit to the seller, no. but Mr. Buyer will use that first round of negotiation. You've been on for 100 days. 200 days no one wants it i'm the only one that wants it so take my price yeah even still like even if it's you've been on for six weeks eight weeks of course that I'm that being, starts I'm having a, but yes, that even starts taking point. an effect then now on the buying side as well we can't stress this enough you want a covid sale covid sale is i don't think it ever existed i i've not, I've not spoke to any agent at all and we speak to a lot of agents who have actually had a covid sale take place like some of these discounted prices. I mean, yes, maybe there's something which is listed for a million and somebody picks it up for like 925 or something like that. But these 900,000 listings going for 825, 850, it's not happening. It's not happening. And if you go into negotiations thinking that, especially with the way the market is moving right now, you actually run the risk of doing the opposite. If you come in with something that low, expecting a COVID sale, which a seller and agent will know that's what you're hoping for, you're just gonna, if anything, push them in the wrong direction and make them more inclined to not even come back and counter. Yeah, and again, to the exact point we last made on the selling side, if you offer lower does not mean you will get it for less. If you come further away, if it's worth a million and they list it at 1.1, they listed at 1.1 for a reason. Mm -hmm. If they, all the comps show a million, they've listed at 1.1 for a reason. So if you go at 900, they'll give you 5,000 off the top maybe, 10,000, they, yeah. it's very, publicly obvious where the market values of these properties are. And if someone lists unreasonably above it and you start unreasonably below it, you're, you're coming to the same thing. You're gonna hit resistance, which is totally unnecessary, but at the end of the day, you're not gonna get a cheaper price because you start further away from the ask. That's it as well on the buyer side. That's it. I think it's pretty short and sweet. I think that pretty much summarizes us up. We're not in the market right now to start trying these risky and different tactics. You really need to be acute on your pricing and that is by sole comparables right now. Uh, in doing that, you'll be safe. Otherwise, you run a very high risk of shooting yourself in your own foot. As a buyer or a seller. As a buyer or this a seller. True. Thank you guys. We need to get out of the sun. It's blinding us right now. And we will see you next week. Bye-bye.